Today on Filmmaker Friday, we're gonna be talking about the five common mistakes filmmakers make when they're shooting their B-roll. Stick around. I hide the fact that I'm drinking pop in a coffee cup because coffee makes you look sophisticated. While I am just a big kid. What's up everybody? My name's Jason from Night Owls Media and Four Love Films and today we're gonna to be talking all about your B-roll. Someone reached out the other day and said, Jason, I noticed you like wearing hats in all your videos. Do you wear hats when you work? But hats make me feel a lot more comfortable and I like being comfortable when I'm helping other people out. I mean, it could be this one, it could be... I love doing this, I love doing this. Let's do it again. All right, all right, one more time. Wrong color. I especially love the hats when they're given to me by the clients that I work with. When I go to a client and they give me a hat like this or like this, it just makes me feel that much more part of the family and more part of the project. All right, all right. So throughout this video, I'm gonna be showing you some behind the scenes of me shooting B-roll for a client of my own that I'm literally shooting tomorrow. Today, we are shooting at a recycling company. So we're making a promo video for a rebranding campaign for a major national company. I was informed yesterday that tomorrow we're going to be going into a facility and filming them taking off the old logo off their trucks and putting the new logos on. I'm hoping to get a lot of good behind the scenes. We'll see if I can set it up with enough time because when I am on a client's clock, I am dedicated to them. So I'm gonna try and do as much as possible. If I don't get enough out, here's my excuse ahead of time. But I hope to get some pretty good behind the scenes stuff. But fun fact, the garbage industry is the fifth most deadly industry. Are you kidding? No. Well, gotta revise my contract real quick. Today we're gonna be talking about five common mistakes people make when trying to film their B-roll for their projects. And this can happen with corporate videos. It can happen with short films, music videos, or weddings, it all comes down to knowing what you need and really thinking about things beforehand. Okay, enough of that, let's just jump in. Number one, not getting enough footage. When you have to end up using a shot that's very similar to another shot, chances are you didn't get enough footage on location filming your project. So while you're thinking of the story, while you're thinking of the final edit, think about how this story can be told through the video you're shooting. Shoot it a different way, shoot it with a different lens. So always make sure you're getting different variations, even if it's of the same thing. Don't shoot it from the same angle multiple times. Get different angles, get a close up, get a wide shot, get something that's circling, get these variations and it's gonna make your film feel that much more alive. Each time you shoot a shot for B-roll, shoot it again, just to be safe. Who knows, that first time might not have been in focus. There might have been something in the background where a light flickered, someone walked by, something. If you think you're only gonna need about an hour to shoot a ton of B-roll for a corporate project, maybe budget in about two hours just to be safe. Things will go awry on a film shoot. My mentor's number one rule when it came to filmmaking was while we are there to create something, our job is also to fix the up. Either on the filming, in editing, something's gonna go wrong, and it's how you approach that and how you fix that that makes you the storyteller and the creator and the artist that you are. When it comes to editing, yes, less can be more. Don't think that less is more while you're filming. Always shoot more than you think you need. Number two, don't just get creative enough. Don't be scared. Try new things. Try things that you think actually might fail or might not look good. You never know what's gonna be awesome in the final edit. Sometimes I really like using those shots where the videographer will quickly pan away because they're done shooting that scene, but that quick whip pan will sometimes work with the emotion or the music or the emotional context of the day. Using those small little accidents can sometimes really fuel your story. Let's say you're shooting a garage for a mechanic. Yes, getting that lift with the car going up is really cool. Getting it from different angles is really cool. But think about getting the small things, the details, like the hand on the lever, lifting it up. Maybe something in the distance. Getting those small elements is going to build your world and flesh out your story that much more. So don't be afraid to try things. It's way better to experiment and to fail than to have not have tried it at all. Number three, inconsistent direction of motion. 
This is a big one, especially for me. As we go through this series, you're gonna know I'm really into film theory and I wanna talk to you all about screen theory, but it's really important not just for us as filmmakers and storytellers, but it's important for the subconsciousness of your audience. If you have someone moving from left to right, make sure that B-roll of close-ups of their shoes, hands in their pockets, whatever, is also moving from left to right. This incorporates the audience into the story and makes it feel more of a natural progression of storytelling rather than something that's disjointed. And on this same note, when you're getting some B-roll moving from left to right and when you edit from right to left, it feels a little wobbly wibbly. So when you're shooting your B-roll, make sure that it's not all motion. Get some static shots in there too to break up the motion monotony and it's gonna feel a lot smoother and a lot stronger in your edit. Also, when you're orbiting, let's say for your first dance and you're getting that beautiful circle around the couple, that two or three quick runs before you get off the dance floor, make sure you're going in that same direction and not reversing unless you wanna have that kind of contextual concept of clashing of mental feeling in your edit. You ever see those scenes in an action movie where the camera's whipping around someone and then it whips the other way? It makes the scene have a lot of tension in it, like there's something contrasting with the characters. Without even having any dialogue, the visual representation of this movement is making your mind say something is wrong. So make sure you're always thinking about how this is going to look and feel to your audience as you're shooting it. Number four, no sequence. You want a few different shots of each thing. Let's say you have a character sitting at home waiting for the phone call. Get a close up of the phone, get a medium shot of the phone, get a wide shot of the phone with the character and the phone in the same shot. Get these kind of different shots of the same thing so it leaves you room to play with your edit. Now, if you are crunched on time or crunched on your media, let's say you're not shooting on video, but you're shooting on film and you have a very specific amount of time that you can shoot something, shoot for what you know you're gonna need. But if you have this latitude of more content in your edit, it's gonna allow you to tell your scene, to tell your story that much clearer. Remember, you're always trying to tell your story through your images. Don't rely on your audio to tell the story. Audio is like frosting on a cake. The cake's pretty good. The frosting makes it really good, but you still know it's a cake without the frosting. Number five, you're not focused enough. Let's say you walk into a room and you get a beautiful wide shot. Fantastic, you think you nailed it, right? But as the audience, what the hell are we supposed to be looking at? Are we looking at the couple dancing in the middle of the floor? Are we looking at Uncle Bob over in the corner getting plastered? Are we looking at the light accidentally falling off the wall that you didn't notice while you were filming? As your audience, we should know exactly who we're supposed to be looking at in that shot, whether it's an object or a person. Now, there are four easy ways that you can do this and make sure your audience is laser focused on exactly who you want to be looked at in that scene. You can use depth of field. Really shallow focus will allow your audience to hone in on exactly what you want us to see and blur out the rest of the scene that's not as important. Colors. You ever see Schindler's List? You know that beautiful, emotional, heart-wrenching scene of the little girl running around with the red coat? Yeah, it stands out from the rest of the black and white movie for sure because we are laser focused on that color. You can do this as well by muting the rest of the scene and popping in different kinds of color. Here's a fun little tip. Your brain will always see yellow first before any other color on the spectrum. This is why yellow is used in construction and warning signs. Leading lines. Leading lines are really cool. How you design your shot to have lines of a table, of a wall, of trees, of anything visual, literally having lines leading your eye focus to the subject you want us to focus on. I've said it before, lighting is crucial to any kind of filmmaking. You can light things just right, so everything else is not as visually appealing except for what you're supposed to be looking at. All right, Jason here bombing 
my own video. Please excuse the terrible quality, but I wanted to get this up into the video as fast as possible. And it didn't even dawn on me until I was editing this that I was missing a really big one. Natural framing. Let me explain. Natural framing can be found anywhere when you're shooting. It can be found with trees or windows or locations. Any place that you're shooting has some natural framing in your image. While you're shooting, look around for leading lines that can also frame your image and make your subject pop that much more. And it'll make your audience draw attention to your subject by framing them in these natural setups. One of my favorite ways of finding natural framing are finding literal frames around the area where my subjects are. Or I love looking through trees or any kind of uh, foliage really brings a lot of attention because of the color tones versus our skin tones versus the natural colors of greenery. Another way to draw attention using framing is to have an object leave the frame and be replaced with something that draws the attention, but it's a similar type of look, but it'll draw your attention that much more. Finding windows or any kind of things that you can look through is a really cool way of framing something because it draws your attention that much easier. Let's say you're shooting a wedding party during the creative session. Put the couple into a natural framing look and your attention will automatically be drawn to them, not only because of the framing, but also because you can create leading lines leading to them. And then incorporating all this together is really where you can really stand out and make some really freaking cool art. Just remember, when it comes down to it, always be thinking about your story and trying to tell your story through each shot of B-roll that you're creating. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today on this video. I hope you had some fun and I hope you learned something. What kind of B-roll do you love getting for your own project? Let me know what kind of projects that you are working on right now and what kind of B-roll that you love to film or love to edit with down in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe so you're always up to date on the newest content of this channel. And you can connect with me on the social medias right here. I love talking with other people. If you ever have questions, concerns, thoughts, or comments, I love chatting about film. I can do it all day. Thank you again for joining me. And remember, be better and do something awesome today. <laughs>